Hello. <laughs> Hi, Toby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is Toby. And Toby is Hi, a companion Cheryl. of Heather Fu. <laughs> Hi, Heather. And Toby is very passionate about life. <laughs> and we are here to talk with Heather, who is also passionate about many things in life. And I look forward to talking with her in her beautiful setting here in Hopkinton, where I, I met Heather on the trail uh, with Toby, appreciating nature. And I look forward to conversation with both of them now as well. Right, Toby? <laughs> Hi, Heather. Thank you for having me in your beautiful home here in Hopkinton with so much light uh, yeah. around and nature right uh, surrounding you. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl, for having me. <laughs> I met you not long ago on yeah. the Hopkinton Center Trail yeah. with your lovely dog, Toby. Toby, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, I um, understand that you are relatively new moving mm -hmm. into the town here, I, I'm wondering if we could start by telling what brought you to Hopkinton. Absolutely. Yeah, we moved here in 2016, summer, mm -hmm. late summer. Um, it was my husband's job change. You mm -hmm. know, we lived in Philadelphia, suburban area for 15 years mm -hmm. and loved it. And uh, um, my husband had a job opportunity in the uh, Boston area. Initially, he was commuting for about five, six months, and that's a long the, commute. Exactly. Mm -hmm. At one point, we were just discussing, you know, how are we going to carry on, right? And then, if we wanted to continue, uh, we have to move. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's a, it's a very difficult decision because living there for fifteen years, all my friends and mm -hmm. my kids' friends were mm -hmm. all there. Uh, but we. Thought it was a great opportunity for him, mm -hmm. and also thinking of the you know great school districts in Massachusetts. That that was definitely a selling point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we talked to kids and discussed with them, and uh, we decided to move. And now two and a half years later, we definitely think it's a great decision. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, yeah. that's good to hear, and welcome. Thank you. And uh, how, could you say what is it uh, in particular that you are Truth. enjoying yeah, about Hopkinton. the town? Yeah, we, so when we were looking for houses, we actually looked uh, in nearby towns, mm -hmm. Westboro, Hopkinton, uh, Shrewsbury, you know, uh, basically in the Metro West area, because my husband's job was, was in Worcester. So, and, and we also wanted to have the opportunity to continue to kind of go to the east potentially, you know, if there's any changes. So it was a very practical reason when we were looking. But then when we visited houses and looked into the neighborhood, we fell in love with Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with the other <laughs> town, but it was, you know, the natural beauty mm -hmm. and then just um, it's very neat town mm -hmm. and then uh, we walk into the streets and people are very nice mm -hmm. so in this particular neighborhood when we walked in we just fell in love it was mm -hmm. just feel at home mm -hmm. so we mm -hmm. I didn't even um, when we, we were literally settling for the house um, before that I didn't even come until you know the, the inspection um, my husband was worried that if, if I didn't come, I wouldn't feel good afterwards. So I actually made the trip from Philadelphia to here mm -hmm. um, on the afternoon on the train ride. And uh, when I walked in, I was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's an easy decision. And, uh, um, you know, the both state uh, parks are nearby. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends actually had to drive 30 minutes to come here, but we just live in, in the resort, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then it, I think the combination of na nature, natural beauties and people, um, and the, the history of the town, you know, there's mm -hmm. three, over 300 mm -hmm. years now, mm -hmm. and, and a marathon, to That's be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that kind of uh, hit us when we heard it is the starting point, mm -hmm. right? Because Boston Marathon is a, is a prestigious running event. None of us are runners. <laughs> well, actually, I, I need to correct. My husband ran half marathon when he was seeing ah, Philadelphia. He's yeah. on his way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's a day yeah. the world comes to Hopkins. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, well, that is good to hear. And um, 
I am wondering, we talked a little earlier mm -hmm. about um, where you grew up and now your children are growing up here and yeah. you grew up in China. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit of the parallel of that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I grew up in a, um, also a similar sized town um, near a, a, a larger city when, you know, I was uh, before I moved to Shanghai in college. Mm -hmm. So pretty much my entire um, childhood was in my hometown. And uh, um, I, I really now looking back, I think it's it was the really the best experience because I got also the combination of both nature and history and people mm. in my hometown and uh, um, I remembered in summer nights we were going out and play and um, it was just free play you know mm -hmm. everyone came up with their ideas how to play and then uh, it was surrounded by nature you know fireflies mm -hmm. and dragonflies and frogs in the pond it was just like a, a, a just a setting that ideal setting in a children's novel, right? So, <laughs> so we, we we had a great time, and then usually don't have to worry about anything. It was the freedom, you know, that we we're feeling. Um, I don't re really remember exactly what we did, but I think that was the feeling that stayed with us, uh -huh. with me, um, and. Uh, I wanted that similar experience for my kids because uh -huh. after I went to college in Shanghai, I also enjoyed the city life. Don't take it wrong, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Uh -huh. um, but I, I think um, the, the experience that I had in, in the small town uh, surrounded with nature really had um, stayed with me and it, I think helped shape me mm -hmm. to who I am mm -hmm. and I think it's it's something that I want to pass pass down to my children. Mm. So when we were looking for places to live, we were trying to find the similar combinations because mm -hmm. um, my husband had similar experience when he was younger. You know, he, he grew up in a smaller, actually a, a bigger uh, city, but back then was still, you know, underdeveloped Chengdu in, in uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really enjoyed the, the, that experience, walking into a field and playing with kids and climbing trees and <laughs> all of those right. good stuff, yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I think uh, I'm really glad that we, we find a place here in Hopkinton. And um, um, I, another thing I want to mention is when we were younger, uh, my friends and I will be playing the field and we'll just having a great time and, and parents didn't have to worry about us. They will just come out and find us when it's dinner time. Mm -hmm. So that sense of community. You know, it, parenting in a way. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and kids playing, you know, with, with neighbors, you know, together. Um, that's something I also try to look for mm -hmm. and then I'm so happily surprised when we, we moved into this culture sac. It's, it's a small culture sac, mm -hmm. but there are so many children oh, <laughs> living on this yeah. culture sac. Like eight houses here, is it? Nine, uh, yeah, nine, nine houses uh -huh. and mm -hmm. then um, kids at similar ages. I have mm -hmm. three kids, three children, um, all at spread out into mm -hmm. three different age groups, but lo so lucky that all of them can find just friends in their mm -hmm. in this small neighborhood. Wonderful. Yeah, wow. they even form a club in, in the Calder Sag. Oh, and wh then they what is the club called? It's the Canterbury Canterbury Club. It's ah. the it's the Calder Sag <laughs> name. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, they they would knock onto the doors and then ask the friends to go out play. You mm -hmm. know, in in the afternoon. Hmm. Um, and we don't have to worry about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So right. even they disappear somehow, we knew they're somewhere, you mm -hmm. know, either in our neighbor's house or in, in the woods and play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that feeling is so uh, comforting. You mm -hmm. know? We know that there's a community they can explore, mm -hmm. they can um, spend time, kill time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you call it, you know, just wasting time, but it's a great time to be wasted, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. well, um, it sounds like you uh, found a well-suited spot uh, as it relates to your own love of nature mm -hmm. and community and yeah. connection with others. And uh, perhaps, who knows, this cul-de-sac is cultivating the next generation <laughs> of Henry David Thoreau's and Louisa May Alcott's, who knows, uh, who loved yeah. nature in, in the Concord area at that time. 
Um, and I get the sense of how important community and connection is uh, to you and wonder if you could tell me a little bit about what a good neighbor means to you. Absolutely. So I think um, I already mentioned, you know, the sense of secu uh, the, the community in the security in the community and um, one would look after another, you know, if there's any situation that needs help. Mm -hmm. We're always there. I mean, good neighbor would be extending their hand mm -hmm. to to support within this cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Already, absolutely. you have established that kind of a absolutely. connection. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So we actually have. Uh, it's it's so funny. We happen to have sort of a calendar of gatherings, you mm -hmm. know, throughout the year, yes. and then we host the parties alternating with each other, mm. and so there's. Some, something that we can look forward to, mm -hmm. you know, every year. And, and also, um, on top of it, you know, I, I think this good neighbor is a great balance, I'd say, between um, extending out the help and look after another, and I think still respecting your privacy mm -hmm. and your own space. Right. Mm -hmm. We've just got this great balance. A nice again. balance of that. Great well, balance. perhaps you could uh, <laughs> form some type of a model uh, uh, to uh, share that. I think we need more of that in uh, not only locally but in our, our world. Right, uh, the right. modeling of yeah. um, looking after one another, helping one another yeah. that way. Yeah. Spending time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I can give examples, like you know, if um, we're. I mean, we 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 are immigrants here, right? We don't, and plus, we moved from Philadelphia to uh, Hopkins only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have, I don't really have a, a large group of friends here. Mm -hmm. um, so normally, I don't have large parties in my house, and it's also maybe part of our nature. You know, we like to have deeper conversations. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm, I'm just not very into a large party type mm -hmm. of person. And um, but obviously teenagers they, they they have a lot of needs right, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then my daughter is part of a swimming team and she um, uh, would host a spagger party um, on Sunday. A spagger yeah, party, yeah, the spaghetti party <laughs> to to send swimmers off for it. Ah, so. And so you've hosted? Uh, no, we are going to host on Sunday. You are on yeah. Sunday, so yeah. you have to get so, a lot of um, pasta ready, right? So I need to get pasta <laughs> ready and also I need to get uh, the tables and chairs. I don't uh -huh. have any. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I, I have enough to uh -huh. sit, you know, a small party, but not like with 40 people, 50 mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So um, I text my neighbors and, oh. and they're like, oh, I have huh. eight, I have 10, mm -hmm. I have three different sizes of potatoes, what do you mm -hmm. need, you know, mm -hmm. so just like, just one text away, mm -hmm. you know, that there, there is a help, and then they would even proactively reach out, anything I need help, right, mm -hmm. and I would just feel so blessed that it's almost like extended family living next mm -hmm. door, I know there's someone that I can count on. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, I get the sense of how important community is to you, as well as family, right. uh, which comes across being in your home and seeing the pictures and hearing some of the stories mm -hmm. and uh, how very connected you all are mm -hmm. together. I'm wondering about your parents and mm -hmm. um, uh, your um, My husband's yeah. Uh, yeah. parents mm -hmm. as well. I, remember hearing from you that they are advancing in age a bit and right. but mm -hmm. they're far away yeah. and you have a sense of uh, connection and wanting to uh, look after them and so yeah. you're talking a little bit about the sandwich generation we <laughs> yes, speak of yes, yes. and I wonder if you could speak mm -hmm. about that. Where does your sense of uh, respect and care for elders uh, come mm -hmm. from? Uh, is there something from your two sets of parents? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think every generation is a sandwich generation, right? Mm -hmm. To a different degree, but I think in, in some sense all of us feel, feel the pressure from both sides but yet at the same time I'm, I'm, I'm actually feeling lucky or blessed that you know both sets of parents are healthy and they're doing well in China mm -hmm. and um, um, we I, I would say our generation is the uh, probably a, a little bit unique in, unique position here because we 
moved from our familiar childhood setting to a new country, new culture, mm -hmm. and then raise our children in this completely different culture than our original one. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a clash between two, and then we have to kind of sort of moderate in, in between. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing, particularly related to the elder care is, uh, when I grew up, we never even have to thought, think about the question of who's going to take, take care of mm -hmm. the elders mm -hmm. because it was pretty much given children, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. that was our... Take into your home. Into a home mm -hmm. or into a place that you basically had have extensive care mm -hmm. with. So mm -hmm. my grandma, who's 90 years old, and she's very conscientious. She doesn't want to put any pressure to any of the, her children. Actually, all six of her kids were in the same town nearby mm -hmm. she's really lucky yes, yeah. <laughs> but she wanted she insisted that she wanted to live by herself but uh, she's only one floor away from my <laughs> uncle uh, young uncle mm -hmm. so it's you know so it, it's still uh, she enjoys the, the, the independence mm -hmm. but at the same time she knew that there is a network a safety network mm -hmm. for her that if anything that she needs she could reach out mm -hmm. and my mom visit her every day ah, so mm -hmm. um so that was the culture that i grew up with mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. the elders are taken care of by the kids mm -hmm. and the younger generations and then when we moved first moved to here i was actually very happy to learn that you have you can enjoy such high level of freedom without caring about what your parents think or your kids think of you it's pretty much all about you right it's a very individual centered uh, mm -hmm. culture I just at least I think the modern <laughs> uh -huh. yeah so that's my impression I could be mm -hmm. wrong but <laughs> <laughs> that is the idea that freedom is important <laughs> yes yes so we um, I think in the the first I'd say first 10 years that was just the freedom that I've enjoyed I mm. didn't even think about uh, the elder care you know my parents because they were younger right mm -hmm. I mean now uh, the second 10 years things started to hit us when they they're aging and I noticed the difference my husband traveled back to China quite quite frequently he would tell me the same thing every time he see sees his parents he just thinks you know it's different mm -hmm. so we now started to think about the question and then it started to hit me and as I I'm an aging myself <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so, um, I, I think it really, the freedom comes with a price. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's the, it, it's, you know, this, this separation and feeling that not necessarily you wanted to endure, you know, in your life. Mm -hmm. And I now completely understand when my mother or my mother-in-law says, you know, I wish you guys were around, or I can see Cameron, four-year-old, you know, every day. Mm, right. I I feel I feel it. I can feel mm -hmm. it. I think ten years ago I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I would just kind of ignore or just think, um, you know, they're trying to 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 kidnap me <laughs> in some way. <laughs> uh -huh. Now I kind of yeah. know, you know, when they say that, they they, they really want it Speaking to. Speaking from their heart. Right. They mm -hmm. they don't really want it to want me do anything it's mm. their just feeling mm -hmm. right yeah so yeah. um I, I i talked about this with my husband sometimes but i think in my heart what i'm thinking is you know i really dearly embrace the culture american culture and um my my literally my youth have been spending this country and i love this country i love this culture but on the other hand, the, my root, right? Growing up, I still had such a strong attachment <clears throat> with my native culture and my parents, my parents-in-law, my native, my my sister also lived in China. So, all of those attachments still sort of draw me, you know, to mm. continue to care uh, the way that I think I grew up with. So I I think we we don't really know what the solution is gonna be. Mm. But I think there's no doubt that we're going to take care of them yes. and uh, mm -hmm. the best way we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, reality is there that when kids are still young and they're growing up here, and it's very hard to, for them to move back to China. And mm -hmm. I, we don't really have a, a concrete plan to move as of yet. 
Um, but I think, you know, we'll see the situation comes, we'll mm -hmm. just deal with it. But our guiding principle is, you know, we're going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, and yet that is uh, such an important awareness that sometimes in life we don't know what we're going to do, but yeah. just to steer forward yeah. and uh, it will figure out in some way as long yeah. as you have what is important to you in mind. Exactly. So. Yeah, I think we just pray that, um, you know, we have time <laughs> mm -hmm. to, yeah. to, and then because in, in Chinese uh, saying, there is a one, I don't know how, I, I, how to translate it perfectly, but it really says, um, you don't want to regret when, when it, you know, the time passed, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you wanted to do the right thing when it, you still have time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. The importance of exactly. time in life, time in life. Yes. Yeah. is very important to be aware of. And, you know, ironically, we often lose sight of that as we're so busy in, in society exactly. uh, these yeah. days. Yeah. Um, but uh, certainly nature and being present with family and community uh, kind of uh, are counter uh, balance to that mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah. and reinforce your values that you're talking about. Um, as uh, we move forward, I know also you're a part of an organization now where you yeah. bring uh, root, the roots of who you are mm -hmm. uh, as a Chinese American mm -hmm. uh, citizen yep. um, here in Hopkinton as part of an organization that has a yes. big event coming. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it is uh, um, Chinese New Year or mm -hmm. Spring Festival, you know, or uh, in East Asia cultures, so we'll call it lunar, lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. So basically based on the lunar solar system um, and the first day of the New Year. And each year it kind of changes a little bit. It falls on any day between end of January and uh, end of February, I believe. Mm -hmm. So this year, the Chinese New Year will be February 5th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have a Chinese New Year celebration on the 2nd, that's a Saturday. And that, um, this in, is the organization? The organization, mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, the back, off, uh, back out a little bit, the organization name is Hopkinton Chinese American Association. Mm -hmm. And um, we, it's a newly found organization, but fast growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've Great. Um, had... And how uh, many? So we, we, uh, we've you know, had the initial organizing, uh, organizing committee with uh, 13 people, now 20, and the members are growing. And uh, the, the uh, members who are coming to the event, we're expecting around 250 to 300 people. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so this yeah. is going to be some party. Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> we, we really want to you know, serve the local uh, Chinese yes. Americans mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, I kind of talked about a little bit. We have shared some similar uh, values and also face similar challenges, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As yeah. immigrants, and uh, so want to extend um, the support to the local community and also try to preserve the the Chinese cultural heritage, mm -hmm. um, you know, pass down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even though they eat like to eat pizza and spaghetti and <laughs> we still wanted to make sure that they also eat Chinese food. something that really is important for I believe all uh, people who live here yeah. um, a, 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 in this country as Americans uh, or whatever our status but to also hold close to our uh, our ancestors, our family, our cultural context yeah, as well. Oh, um, we were talking about experiential. We usually try to do a little uh, teaching me, the mm -hmm. interviewer, mm -hmm. and talked about perhaps you could teach me uh, one very simple thing Words. to say. Yeah. So um, let's just say ch uh, Happy New Year in Chinese. Ah. It's oh. 新年快乐. 新年快乐. Yes. <laughs> so literally there are four characters. Xing meaning new, nian mm -hmm. meaning year, and kuai le meaning happy. Mm -hmm. So um kuai actually is like a speed, hap, you know, fast. Mm -hmm. Le is like a joy, so mm -hmm. together is happy. So <laughs> well, thank you. And we yeah. can wish our viewers that yeah. as well. Yeah. And I know we only have about 
four more, three more minutes now. Oh. <laughs> and uh, there's so much more to say. I know that you come from study, advanced studies, coming over here, and your husband has a PhD mm -hmm. in um, engineering, engineering yeah. and now he's in pharmaceutical and medical work, yeah. and you in economics and numbers, and you yeah. work in finance, finance and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. b high banking uh, work. <laughs> and. Um, and I know that you also are interested in the arts. And as we're talking here, mm -hmm. very calmly, you have this little vibrant labradoodle puppy over yeah. here who's uh, <laughs> having a great time with Mike on camera. And, uh, and I know that your puppy is just uh, wired for life and uh, loves to just have a good time every moment. Yes. I'm wondering about you, what makes you feel uh, alive? We all have different things yeah. that sort of surge and make us come alive yeah. and I, I understand about what you love and that is part of what makes you but otherwise in hobbies or interests for you yeah so um you know i obviously family life is a big part of you know mm -hmm. who i am and makes me happy mm -hmm. you know but obviously i don't really necessarily enjoy all the all the noisy moments with the kids <laughs> <laughs> so if i'm alone i love to um, I, I used to paint um, mm -hmm. quite a lot, uh -huh. um, and then I love I, I love to read and mm -hmm. write. And what do you uh, love to write? Well, um, I'm, I'm, I, I I write in Chinese more than English. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, you know, just write very random writing, you know, creative writing. And Some and stories, stories, and poetry. And, mm, a little bit, not, oh. not much. <laughs> well, now I'll try to recruit you after. <laughs> No, All right, yeah. so painting and creative yes, writing yes. for so, you. And uh, cooking, actually, right? cooking, yeah. Cooking is a big part. Yeah. Okay, we have one minute left, <laughs> so um, can you tell uh, very quickly about your website? You are sharing recipes. Yes, so I started about 10 years ago when I was staying home with my middle one when mm -hmm. he was born, and then I just started cooking a lot and and really enjoyed it i love the process of creating something from nothing you know so, mm. i mean ingredient raw green ingredients and then obviously i love writing at the same time so combining the cooking and writing ah. that's a recipe <laughs> and how can we find the website um it's a www.1001tastes.com yeah. t-a-s-t-e yeah t-a-s-t-e-s S. Okay, yeah. thank you so much for the interview. Yeah. Absolutely. And could you say maybe one more time, uh, Happy New Year. Okay, thank you. And Happy New Year to happy you, too.